Okay. Well, everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Storybox podcast. Today, I'm delighted to welcome two amazing human beings, Rachel Bilson and Melinda Clark, or otherwise known as Mindy. Uh, These two are honestly incredible. You might recognize both of them from the OC, and they've got this incredible show uh, that's coming out very, very shortly called The OC Bitches, <laughs> but they're not actually bitches themselves. That's just a famous line. It's like, welcome to the OC, bitches. Okay, if you guys remember that. Anyway, they are friends, co-stars, and they take you on a trip back to the early 2000s. So zip up your juicy culture tracksuit pants and grab a seat by the pool while they deliver the ultimate OC rewatch podcast. Each week, they'll take you back to a particular episode and share behind the scenes scoop and interview guests who were part of the OC experience. Now, for those of you that have didn't watch the OC, you can also recognize Melinda from Vampire Diaries. I know a lot of people actually <laughs> watch the Vampire Diaries. Uh, a lot of my guests, at least, she played Kelly Donovan, a very famous character in that show. She was also in Spawn, so that's going back quite a ways. But I watched it, loved the loved the film. Um, she was in CSI, uh, Crime Scene Investigation, Entourage, and the likes. Now Rachel, she is also incredibly famous. She's been in um, shows like How I Met Your Mother, That '70s Show. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the to-do list with Bill Hader and Aubrey Plaza. She was also uh, in another film, um, Jumper. Pretty sure everyone would know that film. Uh, she was part of um, The Last Kiss with Zach Braff as well. Anyway, I can go on and on. This introduction is probably extended <laughs> more than <laughs> I anticipated, but welcome so much to the Storybox podcast to Rachel and Mindy. Hi, thank you. Hi, Jay. Thank you for that lovely introduction. (laughs) Both are more than welcome. Now, Mindy has, she told me before we we did this, she started listening to my show. So she kind of knows my very first question, but I don't think Rachel does. So I love to start all all my conversations off with this one particular question, which is what does success look like to you? And considering that Mindy has listened to it, we'll start with you. Well, (laughs) as I told you before, I've been reading Viktor Frankl, (laughs) but um, it's an interesting concept. I think that success changes, the concept of it changes, or at least it's changed for me over the years. Um, Obviously, when we're young and ambitious, it looks like something, you know, we're, we're focused on being an actor, working on a craft, being on a successful television show. But all of that tends to be kind of a perfect storm and and luck. Um, The longer we do this, I've been doing this 30 something years. um, Success is more defined ultimately by, by my meaning in life, which is, you know, living with compassion and love and courage and the relationships that I have being a good wife, mother and sister, friend and a sister to friends and such. Um, and living in the moment, um, that's really what I'm focused on right now and living a very positive life. I've definitely had some negatives in my life or have negative periods in my life. And, um, I think that's, that's something that I, I've learned I can control having a positive attitude. And if I can be successful and have integrity just at the end of the day, each day, that to me defines success. I mean, a lot of people think it's fame and money. Um, it's not. Um, but I, I do think that in our industry, a lot of times we, um, actors, we, we definitely simplify it to something like that. Um, but obviously I, I like to be able to pay my bills, uh, but it's important to have peace and enjoy what I do for a living and work, having something significant, having someone to love. And like I said, having the courage to get through the negative times because life is going to give you some curveballs and how I respond, how I react to that. That's what I can control. So that's, that's my definition. Mm. I love that definition. How about yeah. you, Rachel? 
I mean, that was so beautifully said. And I think that's why Mindy and I align so well is because we kind of, you know, have that same belief. And I think to touch on what you said about how it changes when you're younger, success, definitely, I feel like you think it's external and it comes from all these outside things. Um, but what it's really about and what my mother has always taught me is success is more defined by happiness that you can find within yourself and gratitude, you know, and those are far, far more superior successes than actually material things that are tangible things that you can touch, you know? Um, so I feel very successful at this point in my life, being a mother, um, just living with nothing but love and <laughs> leading with that in all areas and trying to practice that and be present. And, and to me, I feel very successful if I can every day wake up thankful. Mm. Mm. You mentioned Mindy that, that you had some dark times, some difficult times. Are you able to share some of them? For, for the audience? Well, I would, I would think like, for instance, um, that, so when the OC ended, right, you know, I'm 38 years old and it's like, I was obsessed. I've got to get a job. I've got to get a job. And, and I remember I got a pilot with LL Cool J uh, that didn't go for CBS. And then this writer strike happened. And, and, and it was like, it probably, I don't know, Rachel, and I, you, you and I haven't discussed this, but it was such a hugely successful show, which is a very interesting thing. And that's something that I would like to get in. I'd like to talk about when, in our podcast, how the success of the OC really affected people. I mean, it was, it was, I'd had a little success, but not on this level. Rachel and the other um, young actors, I, people call them the kids, but you guys were young adults. It, it was your first big job and it was huge and you were thrust into that. Um, but to answer your question, it's the show ends and now it's, wow, I've got a nice house. I've got some cars. I've got, my daughter was in private school and got to maintain this. And, and it wasn't, you know, and I, I love the OC. And then it, I just remember being very stressed about getting onto another show. And, and it took a few years, but I ended up getting a show in Toronto in um, a show called Nikita. Mm. And, um, you know, I don't want to get into too, too much, but they say, what do they say? The most um, difficult things, um, death of a loved one, divorce, new job, moving. Well, divorce, new job in Toronto. And I had to, you know, and my daughter wanted to stay in California at her school. So it was decided that I would go to Toronto and fly back and forth. And it was so highly stressful and that I didn't realize I just didn't have the coping skills. And all of a sudden you got this great show that you're doing, but I've got a 10 year old at home who's screaming, mommy, don't leave. Mm -hmm. But I chose to do it. And I couldn't memorize my dialogue, which was a lot. And when you, and what, of course, now that I've gone through it, I realized when you're going through something extremely stressful and grief, essentially, you lose your short-term memory. So I had to learn a relearn a whole new way how to, and <laughs> it's a simple, it's a strange little thing, but I found that I would read my script, I would get on my treadmill and the rhythm of the treadmill and just over prepare more than I've ever had to prepare. Um, and next thing you know, I'm doing two hours on the treadmill, kind of skinny, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, and then, you know, and, and I was telling you earlier that, you know, our shows were, our episodes were, or days, sorry, days on Nikita were 15 to 18 hours minimum, sometimes 24 hours. And I'd work all night, go to the airport, get on a flight at 8 a.m., fly back and forth. And I think I flew back and forth about 50 times mm. and moved about 15 times, you know, between different places in that time. And, and it was my, I was just in fight or flight all the time. And, and it was really hard to somehow, and, and by the time the show, I, and I loved the work and I, and I, but I was having a hard time focusing on the positive, but ultimately what I did come out, what came out of it is that I can do anything. 
I never understood why people would run marathons, but that was a marathon for me. And now I realize I can do anything. So it did. So I can teach. I mean, going back to Viktor Frankl again, if we can find meaning in our suffering, then, then I'm a successful human being. Mm -hmm. So if I can find a lesson in that from, from pain comes that growth. And I mean, my daughter, there were times where she literally would say, why do you have to go? And I said, because I, I have to, I'm an actress and that's what I've learned how to do. That's my skill set. And um, she said, can't you work at Trader Joe's mom? Can't you work at Whole Foods? And she didn't understand that concept. And um, so there, those are difficult times, but I can say that we're all much better now. And, um, you know, it's just, I was a little deflated. Like it, I, I just, I felt like my spirit was a little crushed from having to do that. And, um, so it took a little bit more and that's why this pandemic and just these, these recent years of just slowing, it's forcing us to slow down. And when you've been working since I have, since I was 19, going at a fast, fast pace, you never take that time for yourself to, to actually say, Whoa, what's missing. Maybe, you know, some, something's missing and I need to stay, get to a more positive, positive place in my life and um, much more grateful. I mean, I had a friend who said, um, I remember this, she said, you know, as actors, we complain when we're working, we complain when, when we don't. And I just don't want to be a complainer anymore. I want to do things with them um, and enjoy the journey. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have that balance and say, look, I might not ever work again, but I'm going to choose to be happy regardless, exactly. of, the outcome, regardless mm -hmm. of the outcome. And right. I appreciate you sharing that, that Mindy. Yeah. Rachel, for you, have you ever experienced something similar to Mindy or you've probably got your own journey that you've been on? <laughs> yeah. She... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know what's interesting, especially, you know, this last year that we've all experienced, um, I had to deal with a lot of different levels of grief, different situations, different relationships, people, animals, all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and what I have noticed and what I talk about in therapy a lot um, mm -hmm. is how the grief has forced me to grow and how I can use that as sort of a skill set in my work. And it's, forced me to open up in a way that I didn't really have access to before. Um, so for me, that's kind of been a really interesting learning process with the grief I've experienced. And I've experienced particularly the past few years, a few situations that have really made me stop and reassess and start over. Um, and as a mother, it's even more daunting because it's not just you. <laughs> There's this other life you're responsible for. So all in all, it's been a super, super duper growth <laughs> process. Um, um, but also it helps to just make you stop and be present and, and again, grateful. And that's really what it's all about. So there's similar sort of. <laughs> well, Rachel, thing. we've talked you and I have discussed, um, we haven't, that how difficult it was to work in another country or be a young mother. I was, my daughter, by the way, for your guests or your listeners, this is her poster that the cast signed. Just, just so you don't think it's a shrine. I don't have a shrine to the OC at my house. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was, I was in Los Angeles and I could go to, you know, drive to set and it was normal on the OC, but you did a show in Vancouver or also okay. you're on Nashville and having your daughter on set. It's really challenging yeah, to, it, to be a mom. Yeah, and that's, that's mom. where the anxiety starts. Right? right. Right. And the mom guilt and not being there and certain things you might miss and all of that comes along with it for sure. Um, but that's also something you have to try to balance mentally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's a challenge. And seeing Melinda do it when we started the OC, she had a three-year-old. You know, and I, when I, I did the series in Vancouver and my daughter was three, it was the same age. But she was with me even still, but it, it is so, it's just, it's very challenging. 
Because mm. <laughs> you sort of, you have to keep it all together for your daughter because she's still quite relatively young. Mm. You don't want her to see, okay, mum's having a bad day or we're having a difficult time here. I've got to keep it together for them and also yourself. So Mm -hmm. I feel like that is also a very challenging thing in of itself. So you've got all this negative just piling on top of you, plus you've got to try and show up for your daughter so then that doesn't rub off on her. Right. I think that's that's an amazing thing for for a mother not because I, if, if I was to look at my mum and all the things that she's been through as well, I'm amazed at how she was able to keep it all together. She didn't really show it. I knew it was there, but she didn't show it to us. She always kept it together. And if we were having a bad time, she would encourage us. So <laughs> I, I think that's, that's just, beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing for, for mothers just in general, like how in the world are they able to keep it all together despite the... Oh, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) There were definite moments where my, you know, look, nobody's perfect. And if anybody Mm -hmm. says, you know, it's like my daughter now can laugh and say, boy, you were kind of overdramatic about that. I've got to go do that. (laughs) That can happen. But actually the thing that, the the times that I felt the, I, I could justify and have no problem going to work sometimes, you know, we go to work at four 30 in the morning to be on set, you know, with hair and makeup and ready by seven and have these long days. Um, and I didn't work as much as some of the rest of the cast and the kids, but it was the thing that really was a difficult thing was when I would come home and we had all of, because the show is so successful, we would have red carpet events or events to promote the show, things that were required of us. It's work. Mm. And my, and, and, you know, when we, when I leave in the morning and go to set hair and makeup at set, you know, and, and work all day, but when you're at home and you're putting, doing hair and makeup and people are coming over and my daughter's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you getting dressed to go out? And I said, this is work, honey. And she started to kind of, you know, what you just, you were, you were gone. Um, and now you're going again. And that was that extra responsibility as a mother, that was hard. I mean, um, I don't know. Yeah. Did you enjoy that, Rachel? That's a question. Like all of the extra publicity. I mean, you guys were thrust into that mm. pretty. Um, During the OC you're talking about? Y- Not yeah. I mean, with all of the extra publicity that was required right. and you go to the Billboard Awards or you go to these award shows. And, yeah. And you it know- was a lot. It was, but I think it was different, you know, being a bit younger and not having these other responsibilities, you kind of just did it, you know, or at least that's what I did and how I handled it. I just kind of went along with it. And towards the end of the show, I was shooting something in Toronto at the same time filming the OC in LA. And I just did it. You just go on the red eye, you get up, you do this and you don't, it's just you. There's no one else that you're responsible for. Like I said before, when you have a kid. So it was just, it just kind of came along with it. Of course right. it can be tiring and whatnot, but you know, it's the job. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I wanted to add on working as a mom with a young child, one thing I made sure to do for my daughter that early was try to make it a positive experience by doing little things. Like if I was going to be gone before she woke up in the morning, cause I had to be at work, I would leave a treasure map. And something small for her to find in the apartment we were staying in. So even now today, she's like, mom, you're going back to work. Does that mean I'm, I get treasure maps? You know, which kind of like is screws myself because like it's <laughs> a lot to have to think of and do. But it was just a positive spin to try to associate work as something positive for her. Mm. Right. Because it's hard. Yeah. It's hard it's to be hard. Having said all this, why do it? Why do this job? <laughs> Oof. Trust me, there have been moments, there have been moments, um, even before I had a daughter doing, you know, I remember doing something that made me particularly, I can't say that particularly, yeah, (laughs) um, uncomfortable. And I I remember, gosh, I guess you got, I'm doing, having a topless scene and, and all of a sudden, 
like the Teamsters are on set. Like all of a sudden there's everybody's on set for the scene. And it's like, why are you all here? You know, things like that. I was, it made me so uncomfortable and felt, it felt very exploitive that I, I remember declaring I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> um, but, but once in a while we, we get to do something, but look, my father was an actor. My mother was a ballet dancer. It, I grew up doing theater and musical theater and, and such. And it was just, it was in my, um, it was in my bones. Mm -hmm. It was, I love doing it. And I can't express when I think back, the OC was probably the most fun I've ever had. Now it's very rewarding to do a Nikita or CSI and, you know, to do what very well-written, very, you know, multi-dimensional characters and, but there was just something fun and unlike something that I'd ever done before. It was this opportunity to, when you're doing nine, 10 months a year, doing 27 episodes every day is an opportunity to experiment and inspire the writers to continue to write for you. And both of us, we can comment on is we started as guest stars and, mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into this about how I think it's a great conversation, Rachel, for you and I to have on our podcast <laughs> about how it just really taught me so much about how television works and how my job is to show up with my dialogue memorized, do it the way it was written, and then give it some flavor and and that comedy. I don't know, Josh ever it can, um, in, intended it to be such a comedy mm. or dramedy as it were. Mm. And, and I think he started, he started getting inspired by this really amazing cast that was put together. And that's always a lot is very lucky. And I know that Josh pulled from Rachel's personality and Adam Brody's and, and he just, and he, paid attention to our real personalities. Although I claim I am not Julie Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I base her on somebody I know. Um, but but um, it was just, you do it because that was the perfect job for me. Young mother, you know, a, a lot of fun. I, I, in the future, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. I love the single camera, like the entourage. I love the shows like the OC. I think life it, at this point, it's, I would like to have fun. And that's what this podcast is. We get to mm -hmm. do, we get to have fun. So mm -hmm. why do you do it, Rachel? Oh God. Yeah, why do you do it, Rachel? <laughs> I still ask myself, you know, <laughs> like, why do I? No, but there are, you know, rewarding things. And, and like you said, Mindy, when you do a fun project, um, I always feel very lucky to be going to work and, you know, quote unquote work because yes, it, it is hard and it is long hours and there, there is a lot to it, but also to be doing something creative and usually surrounded by people you want to be doing it with if you're lucky enough. And I've been pretty fortunate. Um, you know, it's, it's this crazy world. I mean, I'm saying this and I'm like, oh, I kind of do have a love hate relationship with it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's what we do as actors complain, right. you know, and it's, and it's, so it's important to pull yourself out of that. Right. Right. Cause again, be present and like, Oh, right. Like this is what I'm doing. <laughs> I enjoy doing what I do. I'm lucky to be doing what I do, but you know, there's always another side. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point in my life, I do it to work and I do it to support my kid and, you know, and that's kind of what it is at this point. And when you get to do the projects that you really believe in, that's just the extra bonus, you know, yeah. I think on top of it all. And now you both it's, are doing, sorry, you go on Mindy. Well, no, I just think it's really, Rachel um, touched on something that, that I've always told people that it's a very, and it'll be interesting because I haven't worked since the pan pandemic it's a very social atmosphere. We're not sitting in cubicles going to work. It's like, you know, you've got a hundred people collectively doing something together. It's this huge matrix and this, and, and a big undertaking that ev when everybody does their job, it works. It's a pretty mm -hmm. amazing, um, uh, accomplishment and we're in it together. 
And like I said, very social in between takes your friend, like I'd come to set and, you know, our, you know, you're, you're, you have relationships with the DP and the directors and mm -hmm. hair and makeup. And we're, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like going to summer camp every day, which I, I musical theater camp and I, I loved it. Um, <laughs> but now, I mean, I'm sure it's still social, but not as social. We're not, we can't all shoot the shit mm -hmm. between takes now with COVID. Um, but there's, there's an absolute connect, human connection and camarader camaraderie that goes along with it. And then there's so many people behind the scenes that this, that's why the podcast will be interesting to me is actually to research things that I don't even know mm -hmm. the writers and the posts and, mm -hmm. and, and everything that went into that. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like this symbiotic machine movie sets and everything like that. It just works, but it, it only works when, you have everyone there showing up, doing the job and doing it well, because if they don't do it well, then who knows what can happen. <laughs> um, and it's all about attitude too. Like yeah. we, I, that's the only thing I can control is my attitude and, mm. and feelings, you know? Um, and I think it trickles down, you know, it can, the, the, the sorry, they, I don't know why that's coming through on there. The, um, Number one on the call sheet, which is Peter Gallagher, and he's got a lot of energy, and he was a veteran, and and it all trickled. Tri the the attitude trickles down, and and Josh Schwartz was so young, and 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 it was just such a unique um, show that ended up not just reflecting pop culture but creating pop culture, which I didn't know was going on at the time, but now it's it's got such a significant place in television history mm. um that's unlike you're gonna go back and watch it now jay <laughs> <I am laughs> that's unlike well yeah. my my daughter yeah it's it's funny my daughter who's who's 21 now she refused to watch it um through her teen years because she didn't want to see mommy making out with with <laughs> boys and so she watched you know gossip girl and she watched um pretty little liars and vampire Di vampire yeah. diaries she only watched the OC in two, a few years ago. And hmm. she was like, Ma, this is, and she, and she binged it. She was like, this is one of the best shows ever. And it, <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, you're going to have to go back and watch. <laughs> I've, I've added it to my list already of uh, shows to actually catch up on and watch. <laughs> I'm excited to dive into it. Um, you guys have started this podcast, which talks about, certain episode i think you're going all the way back and revisiting mm -hmm. a lot of the episodes that you guys were a part of was it because of the the pandemic that you guys decided to join together and actually start this show and what do you want the show to be is, is it more than just revisiting the actual episodes or is there something more to it Rachel. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> definitely the pandemic sort of got the wheels turning of, you know, other ways to be creative and do things. And the podcast came up and Mindy and I, you know, have a lot of fun talking together. Um, but it'll be more, it's definitely a rewatch podcast, but it's also, I think we're going to cover a lot of different things, you know, where it is going to focus on the OC and the episode behind the scene, fun facts and whatnot. I think we, we will bring in a lot of experience with the guests, um, topics that are relevant to the show, but aren't necessarily about the episode. So it's going to be kind of a wide range. Uh, but the, the anchor of it are the episodes of the show itself. Um, but I think that it's just going to be fun to revisit and go with the flow and see what happens, which is kind of like how Mindy and I roll. I think we're just kind of, you know, like to talk and go off yeah. on tangents and have fun. Whose idea well, if I re go ahead. Go ahead. Who, whose idea was it to start the podcast? Uh, it was sort of the work of masterminds behind desks the hats no um it was presented to me you know like my manager my agent like it was presented 
like, I think that people would be interested in OC rewatch podcast. Would you guys be open to it? And that's kind of how it first started. Mm. Um, cause you know, I, I had definitely thought like, it's a very interesting world that I'm so curious to learn more about, you know, this whole podcast world and how accessible it is and, and how much you can learn and, and take from it. And this topic in particular, you know, kind of presented itself mm. and, it just seems so fun. Um, and, and something so light in a way in such like a dark time when it was first presented and it just felt like a nice escape. Mm. What did you- I, re- I remember it was May of last year and, you know, Rachel and I have always, um, we're symbiotic. We've always, we had great scenes together. The fourth season, we had quite a bit together. And, um, you know, honestly, the last time that I have you know, we, we haven't necessarily kept in touch o- o- over the years, but, um, but I think I saw you at the Warner brothers party like 10 years ago, yeah. <laughs> but I just, out of the blue, I got an email from Rachel. I didn't know it was, I, I didn't trust it. I didn't know if it was, um, <laughs> I honestly was like, what is this? Who is this? And <laughs> she's like, Hey, you want to, you want to make some money during a pandemic? I mean, that's <laughs> the honest truth. Um, but, um, But it was like, it was, we got on the phone and in the first conversation we had, my husband happened to be here. She was on speaker and he went, I just listened to your first podcast. (laughs) It was fun for him to just hear us talk about something. And, you know, I think, I think, yes, the, the rewatch of the episodes as an anchor um, you know, there, are, I know there are some rewatch shows that really get into scene by scene every second, every minute. And I, I, I don't know that we would like to do that necessarily, but I also know that, you know, going into it, we love the organic, um, feeling of this medium. Mm-hmm. Um, it, this isn't going to be, you know, we'll do our homework and, and we know what, you know, we, we have a particular episode that we'd like to discuss, but, you know, we're used to memorize dialogue in this medium. We get to just talk about our experience, things we remember, um, uh, any kind of, any kind of subject that comes up, um, is, is nothing's off limits, but, um, it's also, I think important for us to actually come at this as true fans. I'm a true fan of the show. Um, I always thought it was funny. My dad was a, an actor on days of our lives. He was on it for 40 years and growing up, he would read his script. He would break it down. He would just, he never read the rest of the script. He would just circle his dialogue. Cause he did it for 40 years, circle his dialogue and never watch the show. Just go to work, do his thing, come home. He, he did his job to, to pay the bills and he came home and he was a soccer coach. Like that's what he loved to do. Mm-hmm. And I just would open these scripts and I would devour them. And I was such a fan of Josh's writing and everything they were creating and what every character would do. And I, I think that's what Rachel and I can bring to this is that we we're fans Mm -hmm. and we um, will. And I think that's Min. uh, I've been telling her that she's going to have to shut Mindy mouth up sometimes (laughs) because I can go (laughs) off, (laughs) but, um, but it's, it's, it's just going to be a lovely walk down memory lane. And, um, and, and ultimately my goal, and I think our goal is to provide some entertainment and fun and smiles. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I just watched Ted Lasso and I've never had a bigger smile on my face from a show. And I realized that's what I need right now (sighs) is, is just fun and, and some smiles and lightness. And I don't need controversy. (laughs) (laughs) No, no one needs controversy, to be honest with you. We've got enough of it already. Um, I think a good, a good um, question for me to ask you guys, have you found it challenging at all to navigate this whole podcasting world, these conversations, and what advice would you give to a young person right now that actually wants to start their own show? I think that's your question. To I was about to ask Jay. you. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we, we should, need your advice. <laughs> I think I was at um, Rachel before you came on. I started asking him questions yeah. because he's, and we were discussing, t- he 
telling me about some guests that are sometimes more responsive than others. And <laughs> I mean, honestly, we've, um, we've, we're just beginning. Yeah. I think, I think that's a thing, you know, when I had a bad attitude, I'm sorry. Um, I have a different attitude. I'm just excited. I'm not trying to get a result. Mm. I'm just, I think we're, we're not trying to get a result. We're just going into this. And, and, and I think that's being a perfectionist, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> is, is not necessarily great for this medium. I'm not trying to be perfect and, and say dialogue perfectly. This is a, <laughs> right. Um, I, I think being, being organic and I, I was never a very good improver, but I can sure have a conversation. I can just share my experience and be real. Right. What do you mm-hmm. think, Rach? Yeah, no, but that's like the best thing, you know, you want real and you want transparency and, um, honesty and everything, it, you know, like you said, we're just starting, so we don't know much yet, but I, I know it's a lot of fun to go to work in my closet pseudo office. <laughs> um, I get to talk to people and just learn about their experiences and have interesting conversations. And, and I just think it's really fun. And I look forward to us doing it every week. Um, I, I think we, and also this show is, a, is, there's a huge fan base and, you know, you look at all these shows getting reboots and, you know, I don't know that the OC will, that will ever happen. Um, so at the very least, and I know there's some other po- um, rewatch podcasts out there, um, but this is this podcast world. It's I, I've been told it's like the wild, wild West now. <laughs> and <laughs> so um, I think it's, um, I don't know. We have a, I, I, I think it's, I'm kind of equating it to, I've, I've had the um, experience um, and honor of getting to do some conventions over the years. And it's, you know, my, my career has definitely had quite a few of these, whether it's sci-fi or some, some um, horror, but there's some very intense fans out there. And I realized how much I enjoy talking to people who really enjoy something that I've done. Mm. And just having a conversation and I could, they, and they get into details with, um, with me and ask lots of questions. And, and this is one of my favorite subjects. It was a lovely time in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and I learned so much. And, um, so I think it's great to be able to, it's an honor to get to be able to share that with people. Have you ever come across a fan? Cause I know there are some very diehard fans out there that kind of know pretty much every single intricate detail and details that you never thought you actually knew yourself and they're coming out with it. So have you ever encountered some of those fans at all? More so, more so I've seen quite a few people, that character I was telling you about, but the movie that I did, the female zombie, that that zombie is tattooed on at least a dozen people that I've met. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It happens at every convention that I've seen. <laughs> That's um, awesome. <laughs> but um, I'm sure there, there are, I haven't, I mean, that's the thing that I'm excited about hearing other people's experiences <clears throat> with the OC, because I can only tell you what I remember. And to be honest, right. It's hard to remember, you know, things like, completely. Although Rachel, I've been watching more and more episodes and I got to say, because, you know, when you have to go watch yourself and it's like, okay, it's back that many years ago, I'm prepared for, you know, a a mediocre performance or not being impressed. I'm impressed. (laughs) It was good. I I was like, wow, you, you actually played that scene pretty good, Mindy. <laughs> yeah, That's that how you should good. feel proud, you know, <laughs> it's awesome. but it holds up. It's right. really funny. It's like, I, I was like, wait, I see her. Wow. What a manipulator she is. And I'm like, oh, a little snaky lady. She wasn't. Anyway. You do it so well. I mean, we, I've watched the first few and I'm watching Mindy and I'm like, you're genius. Just the oh. character, everything is so, so fun to watch. So no. no, but, but, but Rachel has so many of these gotta pee. <laughs> Ew. I That's mean, what Josh Rachel, Schwartz, the creator says, I got the part because of how I delivered that line. So yeah, yeah. I'm a peer. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get the part, Rachel? Like, what, did you have to audition at all? Yeah. Yeah. So what's interesting, cause Mindy said, you know, we started off as guest stars. So when 
you're a guest star, you audition just in the way of, you know, casting director, sometimes producers and director maybe. But when you are a regular cast member, you have to test, as they say, which go in front of the whole network and all the people, you know, at the top. And it's pretty nerve wracking. I don't know that I would have gotten the part had I had to do that because it's intimidating, you know? So I just auditioned. It's funny. One of my best friends at the time was auditioning for Marissa for the role of uh, Misha's role of Marissa. And I remember reading it and I was like, I like that part, you know, I want to audition for that part. And I happened to get called in for summer. Um, and that was it. I said, I got to pee. You got to pee. And Josh Schwartz was like, yep, there's summer. I, I think they were originally going for your quintessential Orange County, big blonde hair, whatever the, you know, kind of, I think stereotype at the time was, uh, and I was definitely not what they had in mind. So I guess, you know, comedy will get you far. <laughs> yeah, it will. And what's, what's your creative process like with, I guess, not just with your character in, in the OC, but in general, like your, when you get a script and forming your character, what do you envision that character to be? Do you have like this, this long process or do you automatically know, okay, I know this? Uh, for me personally, I'm definitely more fly by the seat of your pants. So just like of the moment I will get material, but for me, like, I like to not be as rehearsed. I like to sort of just go at it, uh, more of an organic way, I guess. And it works different for everybody. And for me, I'm lucky enough to be a quick learner as far as learning your lines and photographic memory and all of that. So I can sort of jump into things. Uh, just a little, like just blindfolded, um, which I wouldn't recommend all the time. There's definitely times that call for rehearsal and, you know, practice and whatnot. But my belief, I guess, even in life is kind of just going with the flow. It's my personality. So I kind of attack work that way as well. <laughs> so you got a photographic memory. Yeah. That's about the only memory. You I really? Have, I do, but that's it. Like I don't, I have a horrible short-term memory, all that kind of stuff, but photographic memory. So if I look at the words on the page yeah it'll change no sorry i'm sure oh i don't doubt it it's already going oh, like hot flashes yeah no, it's kidding. all gonna go out the window but, for but I, sure i think i think it's a really interesting concept because i remember doing being on the oc because it's a different show than say doctor speak techno babble right it's a completely different i could be in the makeup chair and I didn't do this often, but I could look at a scene and do it an hour later. I oftentimes, but it, it's like any other exercise that, that we, you know, that we train with and you become proficient. One becomes proficient in memorizing things, especially. So it, the great thing about a television show, um, a series is that in the beginning, you're really working on a character and trying to find these rhythms. And then when you're getting into these latter um, seasons, you're not really working on character anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I found it was a new experience for me because I'd done um, things that are a little bit more calculated or, you know, like the Lady Heather character on CSI, amazing writing. That's all I had to do was when, when the writing is in the script, the character is there. I didn't have to go to research being a dominatrix. It was just there. And, um, but the OC was such an amazing, like acting class or exercise in that if you let go and, and had almost like a childlike imagination as, as we're kind of taught to just, just be loose. And so there wasn't a lot of prep because the writing, it, the writing was there and, and just being open to it's the most loose and kind of like the way I am in real life as not, not, <laughs> not being super visual, shallow and all that, but, but just, um, goofy. That's the most, the character, the character is the most like me in that way that she be, um, I was able to kind of throw in a personal humor and be kind of a nerd, nerdy, goofy kind of person, I guess. <laughs> um, whereas other shows, you know, if I have an audition that's techno babble, I, I like to prepare for a good four days. 
at least. But if it's dialogue like like um, the OC, right. I can you know I um, you can do it. It's a much shorter. Yeah, I remember like Heart of Dixie was a show I did where I play a doctor and there was some medical jargon and I was like, oh, good Lord. You know, I was like, oh my God. And then I had to like know the technical stuff I was supposed to be doing while I'm saying the things. And so that definitely required practice. <laughs> you can't make that stuff up. Oh, you, you can, but. <laughs> well, you can, but you, <laughs> you probably very, shouldn't. Very clever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, ladies, speaking about the OC, your new podcast, when is it going live for those people that want to know? I think we, beginning of April, right, Mindy? Is that we? We? I don't know. It's I don't sort know. Of TBD. <laughs> it's a little TBD. I think we're, we're aiming for beginning of April. Okay, it will be a nice surprise for everyone. So, <laughs> yes. My final question for you guys. This yes. is my all-time favorite question. So. I believe that if no pressure, Mindy, if Mindy has gotten to the end of my my show, she'll <laughs> heard this one. Um, but I want you to both imagine with me for a moment that you have been able to reach the age of one hundred. It's a hypothetical question, but you've been able to reach the age of one hundred, and your all your friends have decided to put together a film for you for you individually of everything you've ever said and everything you've ever done. Don't ask me how in the world they got it all. We'll just call it magic for sake of argument. But being able to get it and show it to you on your hundredth birthday, what do you want that film to say and to show about your life? Oh my goodness! Poof. <laughs> that is a very um, loaded <laughs> question. <laughs> I just all I want them to say is you were funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's comedy. Why speak? Why? Why? Why say anything unless it's got comedy in it? <laughs> no, I have a friend who said that once. He's anyway. Um, I would hope that. Um, I would hope that they. Gosh, that's hard. I would hope that by that time. I've become, you know, I've, I'm worthy of my f friends and family, um, that, that I've earned respect from, um, from lessons, life lessons. And, um, and that, and that for, you know, we all, we all have faults in our life and that I'm still accepted by learning from, from things in my life. And, um, and that, you know, and the lesson that I would love is that I, I love to live my life and go about every day with no judgment. I mean, it, it's a, it's, um, oh, that's a difficult one. What's up, Jay? <laughs> no, I don't know what it would, um, but it's, you know, I, I am truly a thespian. I love comedy and tragedy. And I, I just believe that, um, hopefully that I've earned, I've earned the, the right and I've earned, and I've earned their respect to be, to just be in their presence, be in, be, be useful to the world. That's kind of what I'm hopefully doing right now. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh gosh. <sighs> You, you had more time to think, Rachel. I did, but it didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was kind of like a bunch of non sequiturs anyway. It wasn't well, very decisive. You know. <laughs> but okay. still, you know, I just, I want, I'm hoping at a hundred, I can look back and things that are remembered were that I was always kind. Um, I think being kind in this life is pretty important. Um, that I have been a good mother. That's the most important as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. And just like Mindy said, I mean, that I made him laugh because what is life without laughter? And it's mm -hmm. one of the best things, probably the biggest quality I'm attracted to people in people is if they can make me laugh. So if I can do the same, I think that's pretty honorable. Um, yeah, just just looking back and saying you always were kind. Mm. You don't want to be a shitty person. 
<laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I feel like that's a, a great place to end our conversation. We definitely got to do this again sometime yeah, okay. later on. Uh, there's so many more questions I want to ask you, but for the sake of my time, I apologize. Uh, thank you both so much for your story and everything that you're doing and uh, that you're going to do very, very soon. Thank you. Can't, can't wait to see the the growth and, and the fans just go wild. I've now got to go and, and watch the OC or more. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll be listening in and watching very closely. So thank you both so much. Thank you, Jay. For coming thank on you, the Jay. Podcast. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thanks for having us.